Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I want to discuss adding UI buttons and UI text to a scene in Godot 4.4. I will also show two simple ways to update the score value and the health value when the buttons are clicked. One way will be really simple and the other way is a bit more complicated but a lot more manageable in the long run. I will also be going over some of Godot's brand new features like the game tab which allows you to play the game right in the editor window. Okay, let's get started. In this video, we'll be looking at the node 2D, a canvas layer, control node, label node, and button nodes. We'll also be looking at signals, the at on ready variable, and setters. After creating our project, let's go to the 2D view and create a new 2D scene and call it Game Scene. We will use a Canvas Layer node to hold all our UI elements. To add a node, we click the plus button and search for the Canvas Layer. Click Create to add it to our scene. Rename the Canvas Layer to UI. Now let's add a Control node to hold the text. We can set its anchor presets to full rect. Let's rename the control node to UI text and add a label node to it. We will rename the label node to score text. Now let's save the scene. With the score text selected, we can set the example text right in the inspector. I will change its anchor presets to top right. With the UI canvas layer selected, we add another control node, call it UI buttons, and add a button node as a child of the UI buttons control node. Let's rename the button to add score. Before I forget, let's go back to the UI buttons and set its anchor position to full rec. Now let's select the add score button and add text to it. Then set its anchor presets to center. Let's take a look at the new feature, the Game tab. The Game tab adds a lot of new features to Godot 4.4. Clicking on these three dots right here allows you to either embed the game in the editor or make the game workspace floating as it was before in 4.3. I will choose to embed the game on Next Play. Above the game window, we can see that there are various buttons. I will be focusing on the input button that allows game input when the game is playing, the 2D button that disables the game input and allows you to select node 2Ds, control nodes, and manipulate the 2D camera, the select mode which shows a list of all nodes at the position clicked, and the show list of selectable nodes button. One of the new features of Godot 4.4 is being able to edit nodes when the game is running. To do this, we'll need to disable the game input and choose either the select mode or the show list of selectable nodes button. I'll use show list of selectable nodes. Now we can click on the UI elements in the game and see a list of what can be changed. Let's change the score text. The score text node opens in the inspector and we are able to change the score text in real time. The change is reflected in the game view. However, it's worth noting, if we stop the game and play the game again, none of the changes persist. Okay, let's go back to the 2D view and make some changes. The first change I would like to make is to the font. With the score text selected, we can create a new label settings. Click on the label settings and we can drag the font right into the inspector. I will use this Puppins regular font that I got on 101fonts.com. Now let's change the size and we can also change the color to green. Now let's do the same for the add score button. With the add score button selected, we go to the theme overrides, go to fonts and drag the font in the inspector. Then we can change the font sizes and under colors, we can change the font color. Now we can add a script 
to the game scene and start coding our game. With the game node selected, we click on Attach New Script. Give it a name and create. The script extends node 2D. We'll need two things to get started. First, we'll need a reference to the score text as an unready variable. To do this, we click on the score text and drag it into the script. Hold control and release. Next, we'll need to create an unpressed signal from our add score button. We click on add score and under node in the inspector, we connect an on button pressed signal to the script. Now let's take a closer look at how we will set up this script. I like to use static typing as much as possible. So I make a variable score and set it equal to an integer zero. In the ready function that happens when the game starts, we grab the reference to the score text dot text variable and set it equal to score plus the string value of the score variable. In the unadd score pressed function, we simply add one to the score and update the score text. Now, when we play the game, the score UI is updated to zero. And when we press the add score button, one is added to the score value and the UI is updated. Although this solution works, it can become very difficult to manage as we add more variables and UI to our game. But there is a better solution. We can use a setter function for our text UI. To do this is really, really simple. We just need to select our UI text and add a script to it. In this script, we will need a reference to our score text, just as before. Now let's take a closer look. The at onready reference to our score text label finds the label node named score text in the scene. The at onready keyword ensures that the variable is assigned only after the node is ready, preventing errors when trying to access the node too early. Var score colon int equal zero defines an integer variable score and initializes it to zero. The setter function set score value is a property setter for the score variable. When score is assigned a new value, this setter automatically updates the score with the new value and updates the label score text to display the new score. So if the score is equal 10, this will automatically update the label to score colon 10. The setter automates the UI updates. So you don't need to manually update the label each time the score changes. Now we need to make some changes to our game scene script. The first change is we will no longer need the reference to our score text here. So we can remove that, but we will need a reference to our UI text script. In the ready function and in the on add score pressed signal function, we won't need to update the score text anymore. So we can remove those lines. Now let's take a closer look at how we will need to update the script. Once we've got a reference to our UI text control node, we declare our game score variable. This is an integer variable that keeps track of our score. But here's where things get interesting. We've added another set of function. This means whenever the game score value changes, this setter is automatically triggered. Inside the setter, we update the score variable, then convert it to a string using string brackets game score and assign it to UI text dot text. This way, every time we change the game score, our UI updates automatically. No need for that extra function call we had earlier. In the ready function, we set game score equal to zero which, thanks to our setter, also updates the UI immediately. Finally, in the unadd score pressed function, all we need to do is increase the score. We don't need to update the UI here anymore. Now, when we play the game, the score UI is updated to zero. And when we press the add score button, one is added to the score value and the UI is updated.
Now for a quick recap, and the best way to do this is by adding the Add Health button and the Health Text UI. To speed things up, I will just duplicate the score text, rename it to Health Text, adjust its position, change its text, make its label settings unique, and change the font color to red. For the button, I will just duplicate the Add Score button, rename it to Add Health, change the button's text to Add Health. In the Team Overrides, in the Colors section, change the color to red, and adjust the button's position. In the UI text script, we get a reference to the health text label. Then, just as we did for the score, we initialize a health variable equal to zero, use a setter to set the health value, set the health variable equal to the health value, and set the health text dot text equal to health plus the string value of the health variable. Because we duplicated the Help button, we will need to go to the Node tab and disconnect its signal. Then reconnect and unpress signal to the game script. And that's basically it for setting up the signal. Now back in the game scene script, we already have a reference to the text UI. So all we need to do is create an unready variable for health and initialize it to zero. Then we make another setter for the health value and set health equal to the health value and set the text UI dot health equal to health. In ready, we just set health equal to zero and in the on add health pressed signal, we just add one to the health when the button is pressed. Thanks for watching. We discussed a lot today, core mechanics with no gimmicks, from the canvas layer node to labels and buttons, and we even discussed the act on ready and setter functions. So I do hope this video was helpful to you in some way. If you liked the video, leave a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you'll know when I upload another video. And speaking of my other videos, I made a really great video on a snake remake with a twist. So why not check it out? This has been Dragu Geek. You're my resolution when the screen goes low. More than just heroes and ones in this flow.